So today I'm going to show you how to make this spinning like shapes, lights, whatever. Okay. And uh, as you, as you probably remember, Ty Lopez said, what's better than Ferraris in your garage? Knowledge. He said it, you know, and I say what's better than knowledge is Cinema 4D knowledge. Okay, so first what I like to do is I like to create a plane. In this case, I will be using some ground. And one of the first things I really like to do is also to create a camera. Click this so I can see through it. And I like to increase this to something like 60 because then all the shapes will look a little bit flatter. Now, let me just create a dome light for now, so that everything is a little bit lit up and I can see something on my screen over here. Okay, so next I'm gonna create a cube. I'm gonna change this to 11, 11 and 1.5. I'm gonna press S so that it goes to the center of my camera and I'm gonna drag this a bit to the plus Y direction. Now, as always, I like to click this little box here and change this fillet radius to something lower so that there is this nice round corners because as we know, in real life, there are no perfectly straight corners. There's always some kind of a fillet. So that's the reason why it looks better. So now I'm gonna simply search for this cloner. I'm gonna hold down Alt and press Enter. And I'm gonna change this to one, one, and this one to 10. And if I zoom out and I change, and I lower this, as you can see, these cubes are coming together. And now if I lower this even more and zoom in and drag them down and zoom in again and drag them down so they are almost at the level of the floor like this. I can even make them go a bit closer. Actually, yeah, I should have done this uh, first. So that now if I move this closer to the floor, I can see if it looks like it's touching and it is. Actually, I can go and look at this from the side view. So it's a little, little bit more precise. Okay, now this will do. So next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for this um, bend deformer. I'm gonna click on it, on it and I am gonna zoom out. And as you probably know, this bend deformer is a complete mystery. It's the same as the Soviet Union was before 1991 when it fell and finally all the documents were re revealed. It, nobody knows how it works. You just take it and you place it under the plane and you increase the strength and you just simply hope that it's gonna work. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this smaller, I'm gonna increase the segments of this plane, and now I'm gonna increase this. But as you can see, I have no idea what, what the fuck is going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to rotate this, like this, and like this, and I'm gonna hope that it's gonna work. So yeah, in this case it does. But let me tell you something. It doesn't work for most of the time when I try it. Maybe I'm stupid, but you know, whatever. Recently Cinema 4D added these, um, these lines here to show for extremely stupid people like me how it works, but you know, it still doesn't uh, tell me exactly how it works, so whatever. Just now it did work, so I have this uh, wall here. Okay, let me stop speaking about this bend deformer. So next what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna delete this dome light and I'm gonna search for this sky rig. And for me personally, I like to, in this case, I will drag this a bit down and I like to change this model to whatever this is because I think it looks better. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna create a plane. I'm gonna drag it up and I'm gonna create a little bit of a roof here, you know, because all art needs something to make a shade, you know? All art needs some kind of a shade. I don't know what that means, but whatever, okay? Now, I'm gonna search 
for a cube. I'm going to create this cube. And again, I'm going to search for a cloner. I'm going to create a cloner. I'm going to put this cube under this cloner. I'm going to change the size of this cube to, let's say, 15. I'm not sure if this is the right number, but I'm going to use it for now because I really need to see if this works. Okay, if I drag it closer, and now the really magical part comes. I select this plane. Uh, actually, I will drag it over here. And I create, I search for this bool deformer. I hold down Alt, Enter, so that it becomes apparent. And the second object under the bool deformer needs to be the one which is going to do the subtraction. So now this cloner is going to be subtracting from this plane, as you can see here, right? And there's all of these shadows being cast. Actually, there's a shadow all around, but the light is coming through exactly in this uh, those places, okay? Now, it looks like these cubes need to be a bit bigger. Maybe like this. And something like this. And maybe over here, I'm going to increase this to 10. And this one also to 10. Okay, or maybe 12. Okay, this looks good. And now I'm going to rotate this bool object somewhere here to something like this. Okay? Yeah. Okay, and so now for the animation of this bool, not not bool, but for, for these shadows here, uh, for the light coming from the top, I'm simply going to take this uh, rotation value, I'm going to create a keyframe under frame 0, I'm going to go all the way to frame 500, and I'm going to click plus, write it right here, plus 360. As you can see, nothing changed. But if you drag it over here, uh, as you can see, it rotates something like a disco ball, okay? And if you change this to uh, deselect this all frames, when you play the animation, you're going to see that this is going to play at the real-time speed, even if your computer is uh, not able to like render it fast enough. So you can have an idea how fast does it spin and if it matches your needs. And as you can see, it's slow in the beginning and it's becoming faster and then it's again slow. Yeah, I think that's called easing, but that's not really what I want in this case. Usually it looks better, but in this case I don't need that. So I'm going to click on here in my timeline and I'm going to select this button right here. So now it changes this easing to linear. And that simply means that there's not going to be this um, speeding up in the beginning and slowing down in, in the end. And now, as you can see, it loops, this, uh, this loops. Okay, so now if I select my cloner and I search for this step effector here, and I deselect the scale, enable rotation, enable this auto keyframing, uh, click this button right here, and then I will go to frame, let's say 250, and increase this, okay? And I will go, I will go up, increase it, increase it, until I can see that it comes back. And it so happens that this stops at 810. Uh, it makes a perfect loop. I don't know why this is so. Maybe some math mathematicians or whatever people who are general, just basically smarter than me, they can tell me why does it loop at exactly this number. But it does, and that's enough for me. Now I'm gonna go in my timeline, and I'm gonna click on the step effector, and I'm gonna select this one and change this to repeat. So what's that? What that simply does is it makes it do it uh, again, and the zero means that it's gonna do it forever. Okay. So now, as you can see, if I play the animation, it's doing this rotation over again, all over again, and I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm going to uh, click this linear and it's going to be linear. Okay? Yep. Now I think it's time for creating the materials. Okay? The first material will be for the floor. It's going to be very simple. I'm going to change. The only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to change this to a bluish or greenish uh, tint. Okay? Not tint, but color. And I think I'm going to change this roughness also to also to something like this okay 
Now the other material is going to be for this cloner itself. Now if I go in here and choose this iron, you can see that this iron, this looks like um, a metal right now. And of course you can do whatever you want here. You can tinker with these settings, create uh, a look that you want. But in my case, what I like to do usually, I like to add a little bit of a bump map, okay? I'm gonna search for this bump map, double click here. It appears and now there's some problems with this uh, viewport just because the node window is kind of messing around with the viewport. And I have found that if you undock this, then it's gonna be fine. But I like to dock this because it's easier to work this way. I don't know, Cinema 4D, please fix this. I do not like to see my uh, viewport here messed up. Okay, so this bump map needs to be connected to the overall bump map. And now something needs to go in the bump map, you know? So I'm gonna search for this Maxon Noise, double click this again, connect this to Texture Input, okay? Now, if you click uh, this icon here, for me, it's bound to the uh, keyboard shortcut Q. And as you can see, the noise looks like this. It's obvious that it needs to be a little bit smaller for my, for my taste. You can do whatever you like. But if I change this to something like 0.3, okay, then as you can see, it looks like this. And if I change this to, for example, Ober, and maybe increase it even more, you will see, you will notice that, where's the node window? Yeah, here it is. You will see that, okay, let me just try to disable this solo. It's not working. I don't know why. Sometimes these node windows are not responding to these uh, shortcuts, whatever, okay? So as you can see, there's something interesting going on here. If you change this bump map, um, what's this called, scale, to something lower, it's not gonna be as 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 big. Uh, this effect is not gonna be as seen. So, uh, as easily, just as prominent. I don't know, what's the right word for this? Write me in the comments, okay? Just boost up that algorithm. Okay, so basically, yeah, this is it. Now, if I go back um, with my camera, zoom out, and zoom it and place it somewhere around here, you can see that this is the animation, and that's it. Yeah, the colors are a little different. Uh, it's, it's a little different than the one I showed you in the beginning, but you know, who cares? It's art. I made two of these, whatever. So please write something in the comments. If you like this, probably don't say anything. If you didn't, don't like this or you hate this, please write comments, you know, because that's how it is in life. When you don't like something, you say something and you criticize, but if you like something, then, you know, it's silence and the world moves on. You know, ju that's just the way it is. And thanks for watching. Um, you know, whatever.